I'm going to be talking about arm leads and arm follows and, uh, and how to match up arm leads with arm follows. Um, and I'm mostly going to do this from a follows perspective, uh, just because it's easier to demo. Everything will happen exactly the same for the lead, um, except instead of having a follow position like this, we'll think leads position having the guns is usually mine, or whatever your handhold is technically should work fine for all of these drills. For me, it's really about how the arms work within the dance. Um, I believe there's a lot more depth to how the arms work, both as a lead and as a follow. And we need to explore this more to uh, take our dancing to the next level um, of connection, we'll say. So for me, there's nine different types of ways our arms can move in the dance. Uh, just on a forward-backward level. We're not going to talk about side-to-side -side today. Um, so if we look at forward-backward, um, there's three things we already know in dance uh, that everybody talks about. It's whether we are relaxed in our connection, we have a push connection, or we have a pull connection. And I'm using this nice little uh, pillow connected to a chair. You see the chair here? Um, so that you can see the obvious difference between relaxed. You can see the pillow's relaxed as well. When I pull, you're going to see the pull connection through the pillow into the chair. And when I push, you're going to see the pillow pressed up against the chair. Okay? Um, so also to recognize, usually if, you're, if, uh, if we're dancing as a follow, we're not the one pushing and pulling um, and relaxing, but we're the one that's reacting to the push, the pull, or the relax. So in, in this instance, if the chair were to move into me and push against me, then we would have a push connection. And if the chair were to stop pushing against me, we would get a relaxed connection. And if the chair were to move away from me, eventually we would get a pull connection. It moved away sideways. There we go. So you can see the pull connection. So ideally, it's not the follow actually creating these connections. It's the follow reacting to them. But for simplicity, uh, since I don't have a partner right now, I'm just going to create each of these connections as if I were the lead and then let my follow react to them. So now let's talk about these are the three things we know. Let's add three more things into it. static arm movement, expanding arm movement and contracting arm movements. So our arms can be static regardless of whether we're standing in place, moving backward or moving forward. My arms are static compared to my body. They're not moving. We also have contracting arms which is when they go from zombie position out into chicken wing position. And that could be when I'm moving backward, when I'm moving forward, or when I'm staying in place. Doesn't matter. Then we also have expanding movement, which is when we go from the chicken wing position all the way out to the fully stretched zombie position. And again, that can happen while I'm standing still, while I'm moving backward, or while I'm moving forward. Right. So uh, the thing is, now we want to put all three of these expanding, contracting, and static movements with a put either a push, a pull, or a relaxed connection. So if we have a relaxed connection, right? Pillows relaxed. My hand is just relaxed. There's no push or pull feeling. It's just if the chair weren't there, my hand would fall to the ground. Everybody see that? If the chair went away, my hand just drops to the ground. Right, same if the, the only connection, the only tension in, is in our fingertips to keep our hand from dropping to the ground. Um, so if I have this connection, now I can be static and not moving, right? And, uh, and if they were a body lead, the body could lead forward, and you notice my body goes forward and it's still relaxed. There's no pull, there's no push. It just stays right where it is, right? No pull, no push just relaxed, even if the body, or if the chair moves, the body moves with it, okay? Um, then we also have an expanding relaxed connection and a contracting relaxed connection. Expanding, contracting, yeah. And I can't go to the full extension of expansion because the chair doesn't go up. So if you notice, I can go, if you notice here, I'm not fully expanded right now. I could go a little bit farther and be fully expanded. Um, so to really practice this well, it'd be great if either you practice it with like different height chairs or different height bars, or if you just have a partner, that would be great. Um, Cause then you could practice 
with your partner changing the height together. Um, but next best thing is grab a chair, find a couple different heights so that you can practice this at all sorts of different heights. Um, so, sorry, we've talked about expanding, contracting, and static when relaxed, right? Now we also need to talk about when we have a pull connection. We can be static, right? We can be expanding or contracting. And we can be expanding a little bit and then static or depending on where we are, right? We, we don't have to be just static in the same spot. We could be static farther out, static closer in. And if the chair were moving, doing a body lead with no, ex, no um, expansion or contraction, we would just move with the chair no matter whether we're out here and it we're being static or whether we're in close and it's being static. Okay, so now we've talked about um, a pull connection. We also need to do a push connection and be able to do the same three things. Expand with the push, contract with the push, or stay static with the push. And again, static is obvious when we're standing still, but when the body moves, the chair moves, we have the push. Same if it goes the other way. Everything still has the push connection. It doesn't switch to the pull or go relaxed. Um, so the nine different things, again, are we have a push connection and static. That's one of them. Second one is push connection, expanding. Third one, push connection, contracting. Fourth one, uh, pull connection, static. Fifth one, pull connection, expanding. Sixth one, pull connection, contracting. Seventh one, relaxed connection, static. Eighth connection, relaxed connection, expanding. Ninth one, relaxed connection, contracting. So these arm things are another, another layer of leading, um, separate from the body. Although they're combined with the body, you want to match them and match the body on top of it or underneath it maybe would be a better way of saying it. But, uh, but you want to match both of those connections, uh, the push, the pull, whether it's body. If there's body movement, you want to match the body movement while either giving a push, a pull, or being relaxed. And while doing whatever one of those you're doing, you want to also add in contracting, expanding, or static movement within your arms. Uh, so those are all the things. Uh, I guess the other thing to delve into that a little bit deeper is to think about the timing um, and how long your lead wants one connection versus the other. So uh, if the lead wants to keep a pulling, a pulling contracting connection right through three beats of the dance, then you match it through three beats, not two and a half beats. That is something very common in uh, follow swing outs is that usually follows determine at what point they switch from one con connection to the other. Just by habit, that's what they're used to. Some follows will expand and then contract on, so expand on one, contract on two, and relax on three. Other follows will already be expanded and start the contraction on one and, and then release on two, right? And some follows will contract through one, two, three, and keep it through all of that. And what I'm suggesting is that as a follow, you try to match your lead so that if he expands on one and contracts on two, that's what you do. If he contracts on one and contracts on two, that's what you do. Um, if he contracts on one, two, and keeps the contraction pulling through three and four, you match that as well. If he sends you out and still keeps that contraction, or not contraction, but... Uh, that pull connection, <coughs> sorry, I should do this with the pull so you can see. Then as you go away, you keep that pull connection. Don't automatically switch to a relaxed or to a push or to some other connection just because that's what you're used to, um, right? For instance, in a sugar push as well. Ideally, in a sugar push, we should be able to keep the pull connection on the, on the one, two, three, and four all the way in and then not until he decides, okay, now I'm going to switch to the push on the four or the five or the two, wherever he wants. You shouldn't switch until he switches it. Most people tend to switch almost immediately, one, two, and then they're, um, 
they've got the push connection and they're contracting as they push rather than contracting as they pull, right? Neither is right or wrong. It's just about letting your lead decide. Now, as a lead, also I want you to think about all of the stuff I've talked about here. You need to learn to follow it just as much as you need to learn to lead it. Because leading it allows you to style things with follows that actually follow you. But most follows aren't going to match this. Unless they've taken a class on this subject, they probably aren't going to match you. So if you want the dance to match and feel like a little bit more connected, then you need to follow them. You've got to follow the follow. So if a follow expands and contracts on one, two, then you need to expand and contract on one, two. If they release on three, you need to release on three. If they try to keep the connection on three, you let them keep the connection on three, right? So as a lead, if you learn to follow your follow, you will be able to make the dance feel more like what they're used to, right? Because that's what they do. That's their habits. Um, so you'll make the dance feel good for them. Whereas if you try to force your movements on them and they can't match it, it's not going to feel good for them. Yeah. At the same time, also recognize that matching is not the ultimate goal. It's just a possibility, and it's got benefits and negatives to it. One of the benefits to matching is the feeling behind it. It feels good. It feels like your weight is matched and your balance is matched and everything. But it takes certain styling options away. So if you don't match, it creates different stylings that are pretty cool in the dance. So um, you might want to think about, you know, am, should I match or should I not match as both a lead and as a follow? What are the benefits to matching? What are the negatives to it? Um, and be able, the point is to be able to match or to be able to choose to do a specific styling uh, so, that you're, so that you're doing more about choice rather than habit.